So today we're going to talk about symmetry. Symmetry is when something looks exactly like it did before um, after it has undergone a transformation. So we're going to talk about two kinds of symmetry, reflectional or line symmetry and rotational symmetry. So reflectional symmetry is symmetry is which is in which a line can be drawn that splits an image um, into two halves so that each half is a reflection of the other. We say that it maps onto itself. When you fold it in half, it folds onto itself. If you looked up through the, the light, you would be able to see that it, it matches everywhere. Lines of reflectional symmetry can be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. You're just looking for all the different ways that you can split the shape in half or you can fold it in half so that it maps onto itself. Now, rotational symmetry is symmetry in which a line can be drawn to um, split an image into pieces, okay, segments, so that each um, segment is congruent to the others. Okay, lines of rotational symmetry allow the shape to be mapped about its center or rotated. Okay, so be rotated about the center of rotation to create an identical image. So imagine um, if you have a flower and you want to rotate it around, one petal would match up with the other petal to its to the side of it, and it would look exactly like it did even though it's been rotated. Like a pinwheel, think about a pinwheel. The degree of rotational symmetry is determined by dividing 360 by the number of congruent pieces that you divided that piece, that, um, that shape into. So I'll show you what that means. So the question is on these next few figures are, does it have reflectional symmetry, rotational symmetry, or does it have both? Because it can. If it has reflectional symmetry, we're going to draw in the lines of symmetry. If it has rotational symmetry, we're going to determine the degree of rotational symmetry. So with each shape, you're going to look at it and you're going to decide, can you fold it in half so that it reflects each half is exactly the same when you fold it up? And then we're going to see if we can rotate it so that it matches up. So with this shape, you can see that if I draw this line right here, I can split that picture in half so that if I fold it, it matches up. So yes, it has reflectional symmetry with that line of symmetry. But does it have rotational symmetry? Can I put a point in the center and take a point and rotate it so that it would look exactly the same as it did now? In this case, no. That shape cannot be rotated so that it rotates back onto itself. So let's look at this rectangle. Does it have re reflectional symmetry? Well, if I draw this line right here, that can be folded like a hot dog fold, right? And if we fold it this way, then we have a hamburger fold. So yes, it has reflectional symmetry. Now, it doesn't reflect across the diagonal. Think about folding a piece of paper. You can't fold a piece of paper along the diagonal and have all the sides match up. Does it have rotational symmetry? So we talked about dividing it into pieces. So if I take this center right here, and I connect that and that. So notice that I have this triangle here, and then I have this triangle here. So I can rotate this piece around so that it matches this one, okay? So I have to rotate, and actually where they match the best is this point right here and this point right here. I have to rotate all the way from here to here for before it matches up again, and then I can do it again to match up there and there. So it has rotational symmetry, but it's 360 degrees divided by two, which is 180 degrees of rotational symmetry. So let's look at the snowflake. So let's first determine, does it have reflectional symmetry? Can you split it in half? So always look at your vertical and your horizontals first. There's your vertical. Now, since I see that and I can split that down the middle, then we can split all of them the same way. So it's good to kind of watch that, pretend that line is straight. And then see if there's another set. Can you do it another way? Look at a diagonal. So if I look, yes, I can split that along that diagonal, that horizontal, 
and that diagonal. So there are those six lines of symmetry. So yes, it has line symmetry or reflectional symmetry. Does it have rotational symmetry? Well, let's look at just these orange lines. If I connect this dot to this dot, then I have one rotation. I've matched up my pieces. Then I can rotate here, 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 and here. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces that maps it onto itself. Now notice, I can't rotate it along the green. I can't rotate it from here to here because if I do, it won't look the same. Then the little arms of the snowflake are gonna be in a different place. So if I go all the way around, that's 360 degrees, so 360 divided by six is 60 degrees. So yes, it has rotational symmetry and it's 60 degrees of rotation. So this figure here, you can tell that it doesn't have reflectional symmetry. There's no way to fold that shape so that it lands on itself. But does it have rotational symmetry? Well, I'm gonna pick a point. I'm gonna put kind of, imagine putting a center, like a, a tack in the middle and then rotating it around. Well, then this point will match up with this point, which will match up with this point. So if I connect those, I'm splitting that into one, two, three equal pieces. Or I can go one, two, three. So 360 divided by three is 120 degrees. So it has 120 degree rotational symmetry. Okay, number five, does it have reflectional symmetry? Yes, if I do this right here, and it also has this. Always look for those verticals and horizontals and then go back and look for your diagonal. So yes, it has reflectional symmetry. Does it have rotational symmetry? This one's a little more difficult to see maybe, but if I take this point right here in the middle, imagine like an hourglass and you can rotate it all the way around so that it matches up. I can flip that over 180 degrees. So it's 360 divided by two, that's the 180 degrees because I that's half a circle. So I can flip it that way and then I can flip it that way. So I have two times that I can flip it and it makes that 180 degree rotational symmetry. So how about this arrow, okay? Look at our horizontal and vertical. Yes, I can split it horizontally and vertically, but don't overlook those diagonals. I can also split it like that and like that. So I have those four lines of reflectional symmetry. Do I have rotational symmetry? Well, so look at your little arms, your petals is what you're gonna look at. So we're looking at our like pieces. So I can split this into four equal pieces where I can go one, two, three, four. So I take 360 and divide it by four and I get 90 degrees of rotational symmetry. So look at this star, does it have reflectional? Look at our horizontal and our vertical. We don't have any horizontal, but here's a vertical one. So then we're gonna mimic that through every point once you find one, it's a little bit easier to find the, the rest of them because they all match, okay? So we have those five lines of reflectional symmetry. So yes, it has reflectional symmetry. Does it have rotational symmetry? Well, let's look. So if I go from here to here, so we're gonna connect our outside vertices like that. I have one, two, three, four, five equal pieces. So yes, I have rotational symmetry. It's 360 divided by five, which is 72 degrees. So it's 72 degrees of rotational symmetry. And this last figure, there's not a way, if you look at it, there's not a way that you can split it horizontally or vertically or at a diagonal. So no, this one doesn't have reflectional symmetry. But if I take it and I connect the center and I look at each of these points, every one of these little petals, these little points, looks exactly the same. And so if I rotate it, I can go around or I can look at the spokes, right? If I count my spokes. Okay, there are 12 of them. So if I do 360 divided by 12, then I get that there are 30 degrees of rotational symmetry. So what we're looking for is being able to map onto itself using either reflections 
or rotations. The difference is that the rotational symmetry, imagine sticking a pin in the middle and turning it like a pinwheel, where reflectional symmetry, you're looking at folding the piece of paper. So you're looking at that line of reflection by folding.